Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. The single best idea, and really want to speak about subscribing to Bloomberg Podcasts, search Bloomberg Podcasts on YouTube, to search Bloomberg Surveillance, but all of our other product over the weekend out at Apple Podcasts. Uh, extraordinary political coverage today. We'll get to that in a moment. But I just really can't emphasize enough the eclecticism away from what I'm doing every day here at Bloomberg News and across all of our audio and video uh, product. It's just been an exhausting and extraordinary 24 hours. Uh, last night, 7 p.m. ish, uh, I did a quick call with, with the various people that tell me what to do. And I said, there's only one name I really want to talk to, and he's a prosecutor. And lo and behold, Eric hit the ball out of the park, and we were able to line up someone who's tough to get. And for those of you of a certain age, you will remember the name Leon Jaworski. Nick Ackerman uh, was an assistant to Leon Jaworski at Watergate. He comes out of UMass Amherst and Harvard. He's absolutely definitive. It, the, the, literally the stereotype of the grizzled prosecutor. And he's hugely popular within the media because there's no flamboyancy. There's none of this modern theatric stuff. It's, it's literally what Perry Mason tried to be 50, 60 years ago. It's just straightforward discussion. I was thunderstruck at Nick Ackerman's comments this morning. Let's listen. Based on uh, at least the fact that Michael Cohen served three years for these violations uh, and that Alan Weisselberg, uh, the CFO of Trump Org, who is instrumental in setting up uh, the phony um, corporate records on this and the payments that went out to reimburse uh, Michael Cohen. Uh, he's already served uh, three months in Rikers Island for, for you know, unrelated matters. And now he's serving three months, another three months in Rikers Island for lying. And I think the judge is going to have to consider that here are two people that were instrumental in this crime uh, that did serve jail time. And I find it hard to believe that he is not going to feel compelled uh, to give Donald Trump at least some jail time. Is it something creative and different? Or is it, are, are you telling me the former president of the United States could enjoy a month at Rikers Island? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think what they'd have to do uh, is create a presidential suite at Rikers Island uh, because the Secret Service has to be there with them, obviously. I think there is a very strong likelihood uh, that he is going to be sentenced to to imprisonment. Will he be protected from other prisoners? I, I'll just yes, be as direct about it as I can. Absolutely. I don't see how in any way he can be put into the general population. Nick Ackerman, and I can say in multiple decades of doing this, that is one of the most extraordinary seven-minute conversations uh, I've ever, ever heard. Thanks to Joe Matthew and Balance of Power for helping us deliver Mr. Ackerman to you. On Bloomberg uh, surveillance. There was economic data today as well, key inflation data, at least for the Fed. Jason Furman was along from Harvard University to slice and dice it. I love Professor Furman's ecumenical inflation analysis, taking 24 data points from, I believe it's eight series. I can't remember any. It's got a fancy grid out there. You know, you, it's pass fail for Ec10, and you know where I am on that matrix. But uh, Jason Furman with an ecumenical CPI. Market economists in the trenches have to react to this very quickly. Here is Neil Dutta of Renaissance Macro on the economic data this morning. In economics, you have often uh, different ways of measuring the same kind of concept. Right. You have GDP and GDI, you have PC and CPI. And the PC number, it just covers, a, it has a much wider scope, right? That's why, unlike CPI, 40% is not shelter, right? I mean, because they have, it has a much wider scope. But also, um, it looks at things uh, covering payments made on behalf of individuals. Right. I mean, CPI only looks at out-of-pocket expenses. So I think one way of thinking about it is CPI kind of reflects what people think they spend their money on, and the PC <laughs> data reflects what people actually Brilliant. spend their money on. Brilliant. And I think that's one of the reasons okay. why the Fed is looking at PCE. 
Neil Dutta, uh, there on the inflation report, the summary of it, I mean, in the blur of all we did this morning, I, I've got to admit I'm pretty much off target on it, other than to say there was a negative statistic for inflation-adjusted spending. That does get my attention. Some of the voices we spoke to said, well, that's just one data point, and we'll have to see. But some very good charts uh, out today. I think it was Neil Dutta. It ran Mac that put up a chart showing the continued disinflation of certain inflation uh, sectors out there. Of course, all of it wrapped around uh, real estate uh, as well. Uh, single best idea is just a set of conversations, and those conversations happen in a blur. I, I can't begin to describe the blur when there's breaking news and important news about trying to get you the best voices uh, that are out there. I thought we were successful today to stay away from punditry and to talk about the future of the nation, the future of our executive branch, and, of course, what we'll see as we take this one hour exactly before scheduled comments from the former president of the United States. Uh, We're out on Android, on Apple, Apple CarPlay. Look for that. On YouTube, search for Bloomberg Podcasts. And you can subscribe to Bloomberg Podcasts, and that's important, uh, given just this, the wall of news we're being hit with here uh, in the end of uh, May. And on Apple Podcasts, of course, each day we can, we give you single best idea. <laughs>